Once you have your Bible, go ahead and stand with me and let's open up to the book of Revelation, chapter 19. We're going to cover verses 17 through 21. And our title this morning is Armageddon. Armageddon. You've heard of it for years and years and years. It's a, a kind of a supposed to be the biggest battle of them all. It, it would certainly is going to leave the most carnage ever, but it's kind of a, a, a twist in it, as we'll see this morning and discover this morning. Again, we welcome you if you're listening on radio. We are welcome you also if you're listening to any one of our streaming platforms. We say thank you for tuning in, and we want to give you a shout-out this morning as well. So let's begin in prayer, and then I will read our passage aloud. Father God, you've given us your word, and your word is powerful. And Jesus, you are called the word of God. And so as we consider this morning, as we consider what you say to us, Lord, we know it's information for us, but we ask, Lord, that as we are consider how horrific it's going to really be, Lord, we ask that we might uh, call on others, Lord, who still do not know you. Reach out to our friends, Lord, who perhaps we've spoken of these things that are coming before, but yet they have not turned to you. You tell us in your word, Lord, that we should go out and, and bring them in and, and do our best, Lord, to bring them to the first supper, Lord. And so, Lord, we pray that uh, you would help us do that even again today as we see through the lens of Scripture the future that is in store at the end of the tribulation period, Lord, at your second coming. Holy Spirit, make the Scripture clear for us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Reading our passage from the New King James Version of the Bible, Revelation chapter 19, we pick it up in verses 17. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured. And with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with a sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. Church, you may be seated at this time. Well, just in a quick way of review from our last time we were together. From verse 11, we saw heaven open, but this time it wasn't for an arrival, but for a departure from heaven. So everyone from heaven is coming down with Jesus. This will be the second coming uh, to the earth. So we learned that the second coming of Christ had begun. Also from verse 11, John saw a white horse and its rider was called Faithful and True. Thus we identified the rider of the white horse as our Lord Jesus Christ. And from verse 11, we learn that Jesus in righteousness judges and makes war. So we know that his second coming, it's all business, if you may. Kingdom business. Business as we have never ever seen before because the bad is going to be judged and it's not going to be pretty from verse 12 john saw jesus's eyes were like a flame of fire in other words he could see right through the intent and the final intent of wicked man's heart you're not going to get away with it those hearts and what was going forward to continue to evil it's going to all come to an end and also from verse 12 the crowns on his head, we learned they could be symbolic over all the people through the New Testament era, uh, age, right? The different organizations. We talked about different churches that loved the Lord and made him uh, their, their savior, their king. 
Uh, so it might talk about that, but for sure the crown on his head, the crowns, plural, right on his head, show that he will rule the earth, all the earth. And from verse 12, John also reported that he had a name written that no one knew except himself. So church, perhaps we will not know this particular name until we are with him in heaven. From verse 13, we learn that Jesus personally will take care of business, and that is, verse 15, to tread the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of God. Thus, verse 13, also his robe was dipped in blood, not his own blood, but the blood of those he has judged, again, in the fierceness and wrath of God. So, uh, it's his, that his robe is dipped in blood. It's as if Jesus has kind of like you and I sometimes, we roll up our sleeves to get things done. Uh, so he does to do business. Uh, and it's going to be bloody business. John also informed us in verse 13 that his name is called the Word of God. Right, Church, this means power. Power to bring you and me out of darkness power to rescue and save those who had cried out to him during the tribulation period, that same power that spoke and brought about light and, and uh, moon and stars and the sun, it's power. His word is power. And from verse 14, John saw armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, following Jesus in white horses as well. And so we learned that according to uh, verse 8, this army is primarily made up of us, his saints, right? Uh, of today, we are going to be with him. We're going to be returning to the earth at this time with him. But we notice that it's armies with an S, so it's plural. So we noted that, uh, uh, that these armies may also include the saints of old, those saints before Jesus, if you may, as well as angels. So it's a huge, innumerable army. Then I shared with you that John never actually sees or says that we come back to fight, that the fight is in our hands, right? But perhaps, and I shared with you, that we come to observe and to witness uh, everything Jesus promised to do. And what has he promised to do from the beginning of time? To defeat his enemies, defeat your enemies, defeat God's enemies. So this is what that's all about. And uh, finally, from verse 15, we see that action, right, is that Jesus uh, strikes the evil nations as part of God's wrath against them. And finally, from verse 16, John notes that on Jesus' robe and on his thigh, there is a name that's written, right? It says, and it's all capitals, as you note it in your Bible, King of kings and Lord of lords. Church, it is written because on earth, I want you to think about what's happening as we're looking from a, like a helicopter looking down, but the, it's written this way, King of kings and Lord of lords, real big, because the beast thinks that he's going to be king of the earth. And the kings of the east, they have come to fight with the beast, right? They're not getting along and whatnot. They have come to fight, and they think that they're going to be the kings of the earth. And then the kings of the north, have come to the fight, right? Because they want to be kings, and those of the south will come because they also want to be kings of the earth. So Jesus, both on his robe, it says, right, both on his robe and on his thigh, has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And it's as if to say, hey guys, you've called me out, you always have called me out, and now I'm going to make fish bait out of all of you guys. And so this is huge what's happening. And it's all these world powers that were armies and things like that at this time. And they just want to govern. They know uh, you would say, oh, but if we have a United Nations, isn't everybody just going to get along and mete out power to everybody and benefits for all? No. Man is not like that. It's like we boys. We grew up and we had a game called King of the Hill. Right, And we all wanted to be king of the hill. And I don't care if you were short and stubby. You went in there and fought your, your head off and threw off the tall and lanky kid. Right, And then before you knew it, another middle-sized kid came and grabbed you by the back of the collar. And you went down the hill. And all of us boys says, we're king of the hill. And for those of you who remember way back in the day, we would go, oh, oh, oh like a Tarzan thing. We're king of the hill. 
So mankind is like that. They haven't accepted the Lord. They want nothing to do with the Lord. And so they're seeing who's going to be king of the hill. But can you see this? Jesus wearing on his, on his thigh, right? And, and uh, on his uh, probably tatted, I don't know, <laughs> king of kings and lord of lords. So that everyone will know who really is going to be in charge. So with that, we are now ready for the rest of the scripture, right? So Armageddon, that is our title, Armageddon. Church, Armageddon is a, so you know, okay, Armageddon is an ancient hill, and uh, it's in the valley of Megiddo, which is west of the Jordan River, right, in the plain of Jezreel between Samaria and Galilee. It is, a, it is the appointed place where the armies of the beast and the false prophets will be destroyed by Christ descending in glory, coming back to the earth. We see that in verse 11. You see that in verse 15. You see that in verse 19. And you see that in verse 21. Coming army to the earth, right? Uh, as well as other forces, like I said, the kings of the north and the south. Other forces will come against the beast uh, in their attack on Israel. The other forces being, of course, just for example, one of them, the Far Eastern army that boasts of over 200 million men. Church, this battle is coming, and the battle is a fulfillment of the striking stone prophecy of Daniel chapter 2, verse 35. You remember when we were in the book of Daniel? When we were in the book of Daniel, we talked about uh, the, the dreams that Nebuchadnezzar had had. And then Daniel started interpreting the dreams. Oh, you king the, the, with a head of gold, you are the first kingdom, world power. God has put everything under your hand and whatnot. And, of course, the kings became wicked. And so we had uh, Babylon was the first one. And then the, the, the arms and shoulders of silver was Medo-Persia. And then we saw Greece come into the scene. And then lastly, we saw Rome. Rome was the last real world empire. And then all these years have gone by, right? But in the end, in the tribulation period, they're divided nations, right? And so it's going to, they're going to want to do things together, but clay and iron do not mix. And, and it's going to be a pot parade for going for power. And this is when the Lord Jesus comes back to the earth. I'm going to show you some pictures of Armageddon today, if you may. This is the valley of Armageddon, if you may. We've been there. We've been able to look across. Sorry, I couldn't find a clearer picture for you, but sometimes it's pretty smoky out there. And then here's another one, the view from uh, Tel Megiddo National Park of the Jezreel Valley in northern Israel. And by the way, again, if you go with us, you will be, you'll be able to actually be here and see across all these plains, Mount Gilboa in the, in the background way up there. So we'll see that. Here also is some archaeological remains uh, in, the t in Tel Megiddo uh, National Park. And so we've walked through this place, and you can, you're able to see this. And during the time of Scripture that we're talking about, it is going to be full of people, army men. It's going to be horrific. One last thing, I wanted to show you the ancient water supply tunnel that goes, that's in from the tail up on top. There's this tunnel. We go down a stairwell, and uh, we've been on this tunnel as well. Uh, I carved my name on the third post. No, just kidding. But uh, just so you can, uh, when you read in the Bible, and then you go to Israel, it just like pops. It's like you just went through two years of college or something like that. It pops, and it's really reality, and you're reading it in the Scripture, and yet there it is. You're walking through those tunnels. Uh, you're walking in that land. And to look again, across this, when we talk about Armageddon, it is um, the last battle on the earth. It is a horrific battle of the earth. All right, so let's start with verse 17 again. Let's look at the Scripture. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun... And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God. Okay, number one, angels speak bird. <laughs> because they're, they're calling out to him. And I'm telling you, things are going to change. But you're looking at this. Don't take it for granted what's going on. There's a communication from the creator, his created beings. This angel, of course, a created being, calling out. To all birds that fly in the midst of heaven. So if you can see a bird fly, that's the midst, 
right? As high as you can see them. And so let's make some observations here. He's coming and gathered together for the supper. Did you note that? Supper of the great God. So let's make an observation here. Number one, the Apostle John, number one, he is still our eyewitness. He is watching these things. A human being trying to describe for you and me what he is hearing and what he is seeing with his eyes. Remember, John was told to do this by Jesus. If you remember uh, back in uh, chapter 1, verse 19, Jesus said, Write these things which will take place after the church age. So you and I are not going to be here, right? We're, not, we're seeing this. We're reading about this. But it's just for information. Why? Because you know someone that hasn't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. That is always why you're building up knowledge. You could find a different way of bringing it to them, of presenting the gospel, praying before you speak to them, or praying that you will be a good witness for the Lord Jesus Christ, and you might win one for his kingdom and save them from hell. Uh, literally, if they're here, uh, going to be uh, killed by the Lord at the coming of his, uh, 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 at his coming, second coming, hopefully before that, they will turn to the Lord. Now, second observation here is that uh, this angel is standing in the sun, calling all the birds to fly uh, and uh, to come to eat. So two things here. The angel is calling the outcome before it starts. If there was these fan bets or this and that kind of betting going on, here's a sure thing. This angel is calling the outcome before it starts. In other words, he is pretty sure that Jesus the king, the rider of the white horse, verse 11, is going to deliver. In other words, he is going to win no matter who is coming against him. It's a sure thing, and so the angel is calling it out. Also, the birds are called to what John hears described as the supper of the great God. Why am I making an emphasis on this? Church, this is the second dinner. What? Well, the first one was the marriage supper of the Lamb, right? A, a feast for all of us, the bride and all the invited guests. This is for us. But for those who did not want anything to do with Jesus while on the earth at this specific time, now they become the supper themselves for the birds. Dinner number two. I should have my little bell out here and just go, ding, 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 right? Dinner number two called here the Supper of the Great God. So church, Jesus invited and invites people to come to the wedding, right? Then he sent apostles, and he sent pastors out, and he sent people like you and me to invite others, come to the Lord Jesus, come, there's going to be a wedding, come, right? But many still have not come. I want to take you back to Luke chapter 14, and I'm going to read verses 16 through 24. Listen to this, quote, Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servants at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all the things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first one said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. And still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to, the, to his master. And then the master of the house, being angry said to the servant, first of all, being angry. If you have ever thrown a wedding feast for your daughter or for your son, and you've invited people because you're going all out for this wedding, and you even send out the invitations and the RSVPs and to pick between chicken or steak, right? And you already know you sent out 250 invitations. That's a lot of dinner. It's nothing less than uh, probably $8,000 or $7,000. Depends where the venue is at. It's a big deal. But when people all of a sudden don't show up, didn't even call you, then doesn't, don't even send back the RSVP that you provided a stamp for, self-addressed envelope, how many of you can say, I get a little ticked about that? Well, here it's Jesus speaking. 
in this parable. But he's putting it out there so no one's going to be able to say, no one ever told me about it. I was never included in this invitation, right? So Jesus invites, Jesus is speaking. So the servant came, and 21, reported these things to his master. And the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, go quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the, and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. The word compel should compel us to continue to reach out to those that haven't come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything has been planned out. But again, if you don't come to the Lord, and specifically in this time frame, going back to our text, our context of the scripture, if they are still fighting the Lord, they themselves will be dinner, fish bait, if you may, to all the birds that are out there. So the Lord has invited people. He's done more than enough. He sent you and I to talk to people right now about salvation, about Jesus Christ. And people are still, ah, you know, you guys are crazy. You know, I'm going to go with the balloon over China or whatever, you know. I, I don't know. People are just don't want to come the, to the things of God. But here it is. It's going to be horrible. So, yeah. Those that refuse to be part of the wedding, dinner number one, will now be themselves dinner number two. That's part of verse 17. The supper of the great God. I witness John, he continues to hear the angel call out and says to the birds of prey, look at verse 18, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. Church, this is plain, awful. It is disgusting. It is, it's disgusting if you have a choice. But there's not a choice anymore. So it's horrific. It graduates from being, oh, that's just disgusting. Who's going to, no, no, no. You don't even have a choice. You're, it's like you're saying you're not a player, but now you, it's one or the other. So hearing this and imagining the carnage, it is a horrible picture. You know, it's interesting because years and years and years ago, Goliath, the Philistine, said to David, Come to me, quote, come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14. 7, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 44. In Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, if you may, the Lord addresses in prophecy the northern kingdoms uh, Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, as they have come from the north to invade Israel. And biblical scholars believe that Gog is the ruler of Magog, which is Russia. And the Lord says in Ezekiel 39, verse 17 through 20, listen to and tell me, does it not sound familiar like what we're reading about in Revelation? So it's been said before. A prophet was prophesying. And uh, God speaking, he says in verse 17, quote, And as for you, son of man, thus says the Lord, speak to every sort of bird and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come. Gather together from all sides to my sacrificial meal, which I am sacrificing for you. A great sacrificial meal on the mountains of Israel, that you may eat the flesh and drink blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty, drink the blood of prince, uh, the prince of the earth, of rams and lambs and of goats and bulls, and uh, all of the fatlings, fatlings of Bashan. You shall eat Fat till you are full and drink blood till you are drunk at my sacrificial meal, which I am sacrificing for you. You shall be filled at my table with horses and riders, with mighty men and with all men of war, says the Lord God. Wow. So this meal made of people who have rejected God is a triumphant festival. Just here, as it is in, here in Revelation 19, verse 18. Right? It's also a triumph over the bad. So John hears and he records what the angel has said. Church, 
as revolting as birds eating flesh of both men and beasts that have fallen, this should remind us of how revolting our deeds in the flesh are, our sins, that is, before God. God is revolted when he sees you and I who have been cleansed and washed in the blood fall back into some of this junk. It, it's a bad thing. But for men that you and I, praise God, we can, uh, the Lord sends his spirit to convict us of our wrongs. And we come to him and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't know why I do these dumb things, right? But for these guys or these people that have never come to the Lord, it is going to be horrific. Verse 18 says that the birds would eat flesh of kings, captains, mighty men, and their horses. I'll, I'll come back to that in just a second. But the birds will eat the flesh of all people. Free and slave, both small and great, right? The custodian or the king, right? Church. And it's not so much that the birds care that they are eating up the best and well fed of all mankind, but this is recorded so that you and I will now will know now. We'll see later, but we'll know now that it's a big deal to God if you have rejected his son, Jesus Christ. For those who have rejected the Son, it is a big deal to God, right? Those who have rebelled against God are going to be judged. And as we see here, no one, no matter what station in life uh, someone holds, you will be as fish food for these birds, like I said, because God is going to judge you. The whole picture of the angel uh, calling all birds to dinner it reveals how bad the heart of mankind, apart from God, right, truly is. And therefore, men and women must be and will be judged. Verse 19, look at your Bible. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. So we read and studied Revelation chapter 16, verses 13 through 16 specifically, which read, quote, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of demons performing signs which go out unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. See, this whole thing, once you're in the world, people say, well, I, I'll just walk away from it. I'll just get out of it. Reminds me you of know, the guys and, that have struggled with cigarettes all their life. It is hard to come off of them. And you think you, you've read all these things by the Surgeon General. You've read all this stuff, but it's just hard to leave something behind. Same thing with alcohol or meth or anything like that. You can't really come out of it on your own as easily as you might think. You're deceived into thinking you can, but you can't, right? You need the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the opposite happens when it's a warring person, when it's a murderous person, when it's a person, a selfish person, especially when you get into power and you want things your way. So these demons go out. They influence these guys that are, have, have wanted nothing to do with God, and they bring them to, towards battle. They bring them towards the big kill. Interesting, Jesus said, and back in the uh, uh, verse, he said, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garment, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. 16. And they gathered them together to a place called in Hebrew Armageddon. Church, the kings of the earth and their armies had gathered together for war. Again, they want to be king of the earth. They all had gathered together for war. But as the battle begins, all eyes look up at the appearing of Jesus. So they're ready to fight each other. That's why the valley, that valley is a perfect place for war. They're going to take and winner takes all type of king of the hill type of battle. But as the battle begins, again, all eyes look up at the appearance of Jesus. Jesus is coming down now. Who comes with eyes of fire, crowned with many crowns. Riding a white horse, again, leading an innumerable army. And as they try to identify who, who is that guy, they get their latest and greatest binoculars or telescope, and they're looking. And the first thing that they see, the only thing that they see on the leader coming down is that the words on his robe and on his thigh. 
And what do they say? King of kings and Lord of lords. God knew, Jesus knew what these men wanted to do. They remember, he judges the intent of the hearts. They want to be king. They will backstack each other until the final king is left. That's how man thinks. But when they're looking through and they're seeing him come, they read this, king of kings and Lord of lords. If this is bold and capitalized uh, in writing and in standing out on your Bible as you're looking at this, you, know, so you see the whole thing capital, you see the whole thing bold, right? Uh, it, it's, it, the Lord wants you to know this, right? He, he wants you to know that you could bet it's going to stand out. If it stands out in your Bible, it's going to stand out for these armies that are looking up and they're seeing, wait a minute, he already says he is when we want to be, right? This is a big thing, especially the, the leaders, the kings at this time. So they all unite. It's crazy. Well, if we can't have it, let's all get together and knock out the big guy that has all these things up brazenly already on his robe and on his thigh, right? So they unite. All of a sudden, they, they all drop their differences, it's kind of like the Sadducees and the Pharisees one did, once did to fight against Jesus. So that same thing goes on. But as we have learned, as you have learned in your reading, Psalm chapter 2, verse 4 states what? Right? He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Right? So God is looking down and saying, who do these guys think they are? And this was... A psalm, the second psalm in your Bible, written 3,000 years ago, just about. Verse 20, back to our Bible. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive in the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So let's, let's pick up on something, first of all. Which deceived... Those who receive the mark, everyone who receives the mark is automatically deceived. You're already going to, you're in deception. And you'll keep going, kind of like you and I have hooked our best trout ever and just start begin to reel them in, right? They can't go. Even if they wanted to go, they're not getting off this hook. They took the mark. Once you take the mark, it's all said and done. You know, in the last days, and if, how many of you guys saw Jack Hibbs on, Thursday, uh, on this last Wednesday night? Right? Just amazing how he brings up deception. Deception in the last days is a huge thing. If you are not grounded in the Word of God, you are prey to deceiving governments. Our government is, is uh, you know, this thing did not just go across, enter Montana, this first balloon, and flew all the way to the Carolinas like if... Uh, you know, oh, we're all just watching it go. Gosh, I wonder what that is, right? And then they shoot it down. And they don't want to say anything. They don't want to say anything, but when they started retrieving parts, they're looking at the parts, and they have, it's in English. All these parts are English parts. Are, we manufacture them, we as a nation. What is going on out there when you have governments like this? What is really going on, right? And then you have different ones going on. Now, you can laugh at this, but don't get mad at me, okay? I'm Hispanic. You guys know I'm as Mexican as Mexican can be, right? So my friends turn around, oh my gosh, Mexico just sent one. And I looked at it, what was it? A big old piñata coming over <laughs> Southern California, right? You got to laugh at this because the people are saying, we're not all that dumb to see what's going on with our governments. Our governments have plans afoot. We're seeing the end of it. They've all come together. They all probably make their pretty plans as we see the beast that rises up when we saw in Daniel. All of them are together, a confederacy of nations. But at the end, one wants to be at the top, right? But the Lord sees it, reads the intent of the hearts, and he's going to deal with these people. But going back to being uh, uh, lied to and, and trying to be deceived, deception is huge right now. They're talking about now the vaccine. You heard about it. They want to say, okay, every year you get a cold. So the flu shots, that we don't use the word flu anymore, right? But the, COVID, the, the new shots, they're going to now put in those shots what they did with COVID, right? And so all of a sudden, it's now coming out, right? Fauci saying, well, you know, uh, they weren't good in the first place. 
You know, we shouldn't have done all this and that. These guys are all saying it now, right? And then to hear, and then this is the first time I heard it, that uh, months ago, they said that uh, Russia had blown up its pipeline to Europe to that supply all the natural gas, billions and billions of dollars worth of, of fuel that goes out from Russia uh, to the uh, uh, Eastern Europe countries. And one of the guys that was part of a elite team for the United States opened his mouth and said, we did it. What? He's taken care of. They're not going to harm him anywhere. He's being hidden somewhere. But he said to the news, he made a news brief and said, it wasn't Russia. It was the United States. We were doing some war maneuvers and things like that uh, with uh, um, Norway or something like that. And uh, all of a sudden it comes out that it's America that did it. And so right now, Russia is pretty ticked that the U.S. is going against the United Nations to declare something against America. So uh, Pastor Jack says, nobody likes us right now. They can't trust us. Can you blame them? Deception from our own people, from our own things that are going on. You know, it was our team that while the drills are going on, they snuck a team down there. And oh, my goodness, it, it, it's ridiculous what's going out there. Deception is huge. So he says, back in 20, then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who works signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image. These two were cast alive in the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So, church, now and for the very first time, hell is open for business. People would say, go, go to hell, go to hell, you know, and this and that. No, it wasn't open yet. But now it is open for business. The beast and the false prophet have the distinction of being the first two to be cast into this lake of fire. The devil will not be placed there for another thousand years, as we shall soon see and learn. So during the tribulation period, it seemed that these two were invincible. But good has triumphed over evil. Talking about the beast and the false prophet, no more will they ever uh, bother God's people again. Jesus has won the victory, and we, his army that has come with them, we have witnessed all this go down. Verse 21. And the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. So done deal, right? Though the beast and the false prophets, right, were cast immediately into hell, receiving divine vengeance, as we would say, John saw that the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. This means that there is no excuse for those who fought under the beast, right, and under the false prophet's banner. There is no excuse for them. They will not be able to say, hey, man, have mercy on me. We're only following our leaders. Hey, we, we were the little guys. You know, we were the army. The, we did what we were told. We only followed orders. We only did what we were told. Again, uh, no. Since they fought for them, they must fall and perish with them. That's what's going to happen. So the beast and his armies are defeated. We're going to close here. But I want to share a psalm with you. Psalm 2, verse 10 and 12. What do they say? They say, now therefore... Be wise, O kings, be instructed, instructed, you judges of the earth. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Again, this is Psalms 2. From the, it's 3,000 years ago that this was written. But it's written for those of us who are in the word and we... We have wisdom. We have come to the Son. Certainly we have kissed the Son. We've fallen in love with Jesus. But those that have not, it is going to be horrific for them. It was his word that created the universe. Jesus, right? It is the word of God which will save you. It's the only way. And it will be the word of God that will destroy the wicked at the end of the age. So, if you have not made peace with God through his son Jesus, don't wait another day. Today is the day of salvation. Religion never gets you into heaven. Religion is a man-made thing. You need 
God's son. It's a relationship. You know, I have a junior, and I think that years and years ago, if my son was seven or eight years old, and he went to your house to sell you donuts or something for Boy Scouts or whatever program they had in school, feed the teachers, you know, whatever. It's always crazy, right? Every year, it's feed the teachers, you know. That's what I say. They always want billions of dollars, and who knows where it goes, right? From day one, you've always been raising money for school district. I don't know if you know that or not, or you've been a part of it. So back to what I was saying to you. If I had sent my son to your house, and you had spat at my son, stolen his donuts, kicked him around, and he comes to me with a bloody nose, you know, I'm going to be very angry with you. I'm going to blow up your house. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I would do in the flesh, right? God has been very patient. He sent his son. His son was mistreated, bullied, killed. But Jesus did it for you and I. These people have rejected his son all the way to the end. So, yeah, it's cruel. Yeah, it's ugly. Yeah, it's bloody. But they rejected his son. Jesus came out. He prepared a banquet, sent out invitations, and people refused to come. It will not go well with you. If you are here today and have never asked the son, Jesus, to come into your heart, if you've never asked him to forgive you of your sins, if you never asked him to be your king and your Lord, what are you waiting for? We see the signs of the times. The other thing Pastor Jack talked about uh, on, Tuesday, on Wednesday night was uh, uh, demons and these things that you got 50 pilots, Navy pilots saying, or Air Force pilots saying, we have seen things out there that are unbelievable. These instruments that we use, we're on the ground, we're on the air, there's a cloud coming, there's this and that coming. Same instrument saying, what is that? And all of a sudden, they, it does incredible stuff where it, it disappears. Even some that say that they tracked one going 500 miles underwater. You know what thrust that has? That it's, imp it's impossible, right? We say that. Our torpedoes go pretty fast. I know. We worked on some of them, put brains on them, and put warheads on them, enough to blow up islands. And this is back in the 80s, right? So we know they go fast. And they, they like... Hunt for Red October. Our torpedoes were made to turn. If they hear something, if there's some kind of, uh, of, of uh, uh, what did we call them? I forget what they call them at the time. But to, just to take the attention away from the target, the torpedo could turn as if it had an ear, filter away the ocean noise. And is that a real target or not? If it's a real target, beams back to the boat. It's a real target. Alpha class one sub, go. Next button hit. That thing shoots up fast. Fast up. But this one going at 500 miles an hour, they said, uh, underwater, it's huge. It's demonic. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, you know, but against spiritual things that are not good. Our world, the, the tellings are out there. If you have not come to the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't know what you're waiting for. If we're seeing these things happen and we're hearing about our countries and selling us out and doing all kinds of crazy things, uh, what would keep you? You cannot, you should not put your hope in men. You need to put your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one that's going to save you from all this thing. And so we put the invitation out. As he said, Ben, go out there. Ben, uh, just, just go out there and share with them. Ben, let them know. And, and Ben is you, your name. Go out there, right? Get them to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and, uh, because it's not going to be pretty. So as we close here for today, if you haven't come to the Lord Jesus Christ, my question to you is, why haven't you? And so if you're here right now, uh, and you know you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, you can't remember the day you accepted Jesus Christ, why don't you get up from your chair, come over here so we could pray for you? Why don't you do that right now? We can wait for you. We can always wait for you. We'd love to wait for you. Is there anyone here at all that would say, Pastor Ben, I'm not sure. If I die today, I'm just not sure if I'm going to go to heaven. Really? You can be sure before you leave this place. Anyone at all? So I look across the sanctuary. All right, let's pray. And I'm going to ask our prayer team to come up. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for chapter 19, Lord. What a heavy chapter. Two banquets. Marriage Supper of the Lamb, the first half of the chapter. And then the Great Supper of God. 
for the birds, the wild beasts is the second part of the chapter. Wow. Lord, we pray if there's anyone here, Lord, that hasn't received you, that they would come forward, be prayed for now, Lord. And Lord, we've asked, Lord, that you would take this knowledge, this, these insights that you have given us, you Holy Spirit that have confirmed these things in our life, not just to keep it to ourselves, but with compassion and a new caring for other people, Lord. Help us bring them to you for your coming is soon, Lord. Signs of the times are around us, Lord. So help us be ready and help us bring someone else. Be with my brothers and sisters, Lord. Thank you for their attendance, Lord. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you for those who are listening on radio right now. Thank you for those who are watching on our, on our platforms, Lord, our streaming platforms, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Watch over them, Lord. Keep us, keep us ready, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.